if you use Amazon ads, you might have faced this issue before. Your keywords aren't doing well as you hoped. Either the impressions are low or the e cost is above the target. A simple solution to this is adjusting your bids. But the question is, how much should you change them? Hello everyone, I'm Ankita Patel, Product Evangelist at SellerApp and today I'm going to talk about Amazon Keyword Bid Optimization Strategies. Well, here's a quick overview of topics we are covering in this video. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, click the like button below and subscribe to Sellerapp so you don't miss out on more exciting Amazon selling tutorials in the future. And don't forget to follow us on our social media channels for more helpful content. So if you're ready to take your Amazon selling game up a notch, let's get started. Most Amazon ads revolve around the keywords. When a shopper searches for products on Amazon and clicks on an ad instead of an organic listing, the seller is charged for each click. Now this charge is based on a per click basis. Now here's how it works. Whenever shoppers search on Amazon, a real-time CPC auction decides which ads will appear in the search results and the order they'll be in. Now the seller with the highest bid for the relevant keyword wins the auction and their ad is listed in the search results with a sponsored label. Now what determines the click price? Essentially, your competitors do. Amazon's auctions usually follow the second price auction rule. This means the highest bidder only pays $0.01 more than the second highest bidder. For example, seller A's bid is $3, seller B's bid is $3.5 and seller C's bid is $2.9. Now seller B wins the auction but only pays $3.01 for each click. Additionally, Amazon considers relevance, factoring in your estimated click-through rate conversion rates and the overall relevance to the shopper's search query. While this won't guarantee winning bets every time, launching campaigns for closely relevant queries can help the keep the costs down. Now setting the right bid is crucial for the success of your Amazon PPC campaign. So let's explore the crucial tips to improve your Amazon bidding strategies. Firstly, pick the right bid type for your brand. So to adjust your bids well on Amazon, there are three types to choose from. Down only bid, Amazon lowers your bid automatically when your ad might not attract many clicks. Up and down bid, Amazon raises your bid up to 100% when your ad is likely to do well and lowers it when it might not. Fixed bid, Amazon sticks to the exact bid you set. The best way to figure out the bidding strategy that suits your brand is to try each bid type for the same campaign and see which aligns with your goals. Firstly, dynamic bidding down only. If you want a safe choice, this strategy is probably your best bid. Now, it's good if you are new to Amazon ads or have a smaller budget because it lowers your ad cost, supports a strategy where you pay more only when the chance of getting a sale is high, helps avoid wasting money on ads that don't bring in more value. Now, if you're not sure about your ad campaign and want a safe option, this is probably the strategy for you. So here's a tip. If you're manually picking keywords or products, be exact with your bids. So in this case, don't go for dynamic bidding because you control your campaign. For auto and category targeting campaigns, this strategy stops you from uh, spending too much. In an auto campaign where your bid is the same for all the keywords, using dynamic bids down only helps avoid spending too much on a keyword that might not be worth it. Now this in turn uh, helps lower your ACoS. So how does this work? Let's break it down for your automatic campaign. In an auto campaign, you use the same bid for all kinds of keywords, regardless of how likely they are to lead to a sale. For example, if you set your bid to uh, you know, $2, Amazon will apply this bid to all the keywords your ads target. This means you're spending the same $2 on users who might buy less or more. 
the dynamic bids down only strategy helps you avoid spending two dollars on a keyword that might only be worth of 0.5 dollars now this helps you cut down your a cost second is dynamic bidding up and down now the strategy is well regarded for its high sales potential and efficiency among the amazon experts but if you are new to amazon advertising this type of bidding might use up a lot of your resources because you have to keep a constant eye on your ad spending. With this strategy, Amazon may increase your bid up to 100% for your top of search placements and up to 50% for other ad spots. This has both the good and bad sides. The good is this strategy can lead to more conversions, meaning more sales as you pay less for the keywords that don't result in sales and more for those that do. The bad is, however, you might have to double, triple or quadruple your initial ad budget and if you don't watch closely, you might overspend without realizing. So don't use this bidding strategy for your regular ad campaigns. Choose it only when you uh, need a strong and efficient brand defense campaign. So this means when you see the competitors trying to take over your market share by bidding on your branded keywords or advertising on your product detail pages. So this bidding type can help you stop them and defend your brand on Amazon. Third is advertise new products with the fixed bids. Now, if your product is new to Amazon and doesn't have a long sales history, relying solely on the safest uh, dynamic bidding down only might not be the best choice. While dynamic bidding down only is a secure option, especially for those not very familiar with Amazon ads, its benefits may not kick in if Amazon doesn't know which keywords lead to conversions. That's when fixed bids come into play. With fixed bids, you have complete control over your spending and a chance to collect data for a future campaign using dynamic bidding down only. While fixed bids are safe and let you spend exactly as much as you plan, they might result in higher ad spends expenses uh, because you don't get the cost reduction from Amazon based on the conversion potential. So use this bidding strategy when you are launching ads for new products or after thorough research when you know your bid's exact cost. Fourth is suggested bids. Now Amazon provides a suggested bid uh, giving you an estimated number for your bids. So this number is based on Amazon's knowledge of recently winning bids for similar products. There's ongoing debate among experts about whether you should follow the Amazon suggested bid. On one hand, you might think Amazon wants to maximize your spending. On the other hand, Amazon wants you to see good results from your ads, encouraging you to continue the advertising. Don't blindly follow Amazon's uh, suggested bid. Take a close look at the number and try uh, if it aligns with your target A cause. If it seems too high, uh, come up with your own bidding strategy. Constant monitoring and bid adjustments are crucial to reduce wasted ad spends and improve the conversions. However, it can take up a lot of time that you could use for discovering uh, new products, enhancing the existing ones and growing your brand recognition. That's where SellerApp's advertising automation feature can help. Its automation rules make managing Amazon PPC campaigns easy. The smart algorithm takes care of the bid management complexity, freeing up uh, most of the focus on other important tasks. Now, this feature handles your entire campaign without needing the constant input. Just set up the rules based on your advertising goals and trust that your campaigns are being optimized for the results you want. So here's how to use the Seller App's advertising automation feature. So after logging in to the Seller App dashboard, navigate to the advertising, go to the automation tab and click on create new rules. Now choose a rule from the list and click on the use template button. Or you can also create your own rules. Next, give your rule a descriptive name. A good naming convention uh, will help you easily understand what the rule is doing at a glance. Next, select the campaign type and targeting type. Now, do you want to apply uh, the rule for sponsored product campaigns or sponsored brand campaigns? After that, choose the targeting type. 
For sponsored product campaigns, uh, you can choose between manual targeting and the automatic targeting. For sponsored brand campaigns, there is only manual targeting. Now both targeting types have these options, uh, all enabled manual or automatic campaigns, includes all the active campaigns from your advertising account. Select manually, this allows you to select specific campaigns manually. You can select all enabled for the generic rules like targeting negative keywords or even the money savers. For other rules, manually select the campaigns for which you want to apply these rules. Also click the checkbox, include future campaigns to this automation to include all of your future campaigns in this automation. This is only applicable when you are applying this automation for all enabled manual campaigns. After you choose the source, select where to apply the rules. Serap offers two options. Uh, first is search terms. If you select this option, the automation rules will be applied to the search terms only. The applicable actions on the search terms are increase bid, decrease bid and negative targeting. For increase and decrease bid actions, a new target will be created corresponding to the search terms that qualify the set conditions. Next is targets. Now targets have two options, ASIN target and keyword target. If you select any of them, automation rules will be validated for the selected target. The applicable actions on the targets are increase bid, decrease bid and pause target. Next is analysis duration. Now this option lets you set the time duration to analyze the advertising metrics and validate the automation rules after discounting a 72 hour uh, attribution period. Silverapp offers 7 days, 14 days, 21 days, 30 days and 60 days analysis duration. It means if you set the automation on the 15th of a month, it will be considered for the last 7, 14, 21, 30, 60 days of data starting from the 12th to check advertising metrics and validate your rules. Note that the attribution period is the number of days to skip from the last sync date in order to minimize the errors due to Amazon attribution. By default, the attribution period is set for 72 hours, but you can change the attribution duration from the two. Now click on advanced options on the right side and then select a custom attribution period from three days to maximum of 14 days. Now set conditions. In this se section, uh, you have the option to set different conditions for your rules from the drop down menu. Bid, impressions, clicks, orders, spend, sales, advertising cost of sale, uh, return on ad spend, click through rate, conversion rate, cost per click. As of now, I'm choosing conversion rate less than 5%. You can even set multiple conditions uh, for one rule with AND or OR logic so that when the campaign meets the criteria, some actions are triggered. Note that if you choose to modify a template, uh, then you can only edit the existing conditions but can't add more rules. On the other hand, if you create a custom rule, uh, then you can add as many conditions as you want. To add more conditions, uh, simply click on the add more conditions option. Additionally, click on the add another block of condition button if you want to add another block of rules. You can also switch between and and or uh, by simply clicking on them. So once you set the conditions, choose an action to execute when these conditions are met. Silverapp offers three different actions to choose from. Pause. Uh, you can pause the targets that meet the conditions to reduce wasted ad spend and lower your ACoS. Increase bids. Increase the bids on your high performing keywords or ASINs when the conditions are satisfied. If any target's existing bid is higher than the ceiling bid, it will reduce to the ceiling bid. Next is decrease bids. Now decrease the bids on your low performing keywords or the ASIN targets. If any target's existing bid is lower than the floor bid, it will increase the bid to the floor bid. Next is exclusions. Now once the conditions are set, you can add some search terms, words or phrases to the exclusion list to prevent the automation rules from being applied to those terms. 
Now this feature uh, provides two options. You can exclude search terms that include certain words or phrases, or you can exclude an exact match uh, search term from the automation rule. For example, let's say you have an automation rule uh, applied to your campaign. However, uh, you don't want this rule to apply to the search term. Uh, say for example, uh, cheap running shoes, right? You can add the search term as exact in the excluded tab to prevent the automation rule from being applied to that specific search term. Furthermore, suppose you want to prevent the automation rules from applying to any search terms that include the word cheap. In that case, add the word as an exclusion with the contain condition to avoid the automation rule being applied to any search term that contains the word cheap. And then you have to set the frequency of the rule and click on review and enable. So this is how easily uh, you can create the rules on cell wrap automation. Second is target and bid on keywords with low search volume. Now every advertiser aims to rank high on popular keywords, but not everyone can achieve this, especially with high volume search terms. Now these keywords are highly competitive, uh, leading to expensive bids and high costs per click. If you are just starting or have a limited budget, consider using low volume long tail keywords for your campaigns. While these keywords may attract less traffic to your product page, they are more likely to result in conversions and typically face less competition. So this translates to lower spending, a lower advertising cost of sale and potentially higher profitability. Third is avoid bidding on expensive keywords. While a broad keyword like shoes may have over a million searches per month, a more specific terms like white sport shoes for men might have fewer than a thousand searches. The competition for generic keywords like shoes can lead to expensive clicks uh, ranging from $7 to $10 with no guarantee of conversion. In contrast, specific keywords like white sport shoes for men often have lower CPC bids and a higher likelihood of converting into sales. Identifying and excluding these expensive keywords from your campaigns can help improve your cost per conversion rate and ultimately uh, increase the profitability of your PPC campaigns. Fourth is test different placements with A-B testing. While being at the top of search results might seem great, it doesn't always mean more profits. Many advertisers invest in getting the top condition, assuming that the higher placement equals better performance. However, this isn't always the case. Sometimes uh, the middle or the bottom of the page can be more cost effective and generate just as many sales. Even though the top placement attracts more traffic, it doesn't guarantee more sales, right? On the other hand, the bottom placement may bring in less traffic, but each customer acquisition costs less. Next is increase your bids gradually. Imagine Harry just launched a new keyword and has no idea what the bid should be. $1, $2, $3 or $10. Now, so Without sufficient information, Harry saw Amazon's suggested bid at $2 and set his bid at $3, hoping for more clicks and sales. After two days, Harry found that the keyword had 24 clicks, only one conversion and a very high ACoS. Panicking, Harry reduced the bid to $1. Now this kind of bidding when applied to many keywords leads to a high A cost and minimal profitability. When uncertain about the right bid for a keyword, use the inch up method. Set the bid at $0.5 for day 1, $0.75 for day 2 and $1 for day 3. While you may not see the immediate impressions or clicks, gradually gaining momentum will prevent a crazy high A cost when a sale occurs. Now the inch up method are uh, those slower help save money in the long run. Sixth is keep up with the current trends. Now staying aware of what your competitors are doing is essential for a successful keyword bidding strategy. If your CPCs have risen, uh, it could be due to new competitors entering the market. To stay visible, you may need to increase your keyword bid. If the CPCs have dropped, it means others in your category have lowered their bids and you should consider doing the same. Seventh is optimize every day. You have probably heard this before and it's true. 
DPC isn't a set it and forget it thing. A successful keyword bidding strategy involves daily monitoring and fine-tuning of keywords, bids, budget, and much more. Keep reviewing and making changes to your campaigns until you achieve the desired results. The only way to put your PPC campaigns on autopilot is by hiring the expert Amazon marketing consultants. With us, you can relax knowing that our Amazon consultants are constantly optimizing and scaling to ensure your campaigns run more effectively 24-7. Now, while having the correct bidding strategy plays a crucial role in the success of your Amazon ad campaigns, it's not the only factor to consider. Equally important are targeting the right keyword and promoting the right product. When these elements are combined effectively, they can result in a campaign that aligns with Amazon's ads uh, quality standards, bringing you lower CPCs, increased click-through rates, and higher conversions. To reach this point, consistently test your ads, analyze your campaign's performance over time, and identify both your successes and areas that need to be improved. So this ongoing process will help you refine your approach and enhance the overall effectiveness of your Amazon advertising efforts. And if you need help getting started on the Amazon PPC bidding, don't hesitate to reach out to our PPC experts on support at sarab.com. And that's it for this video, everyone. Thanks for watching. Your support means a lot to us. It encourages us to bring out more helpful videos like this. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to Salarab. Let us know if you guys want us to create detailed seller guides on any specific topics. You can leave your suggestions in the comment section below and we'll definitely create them for you. And don't forget to follow us on our social media channels for more helpful content. And as always, happy selling.